They're the favored of Eli, and yet they have known little more than torment in the later ages of Kryn. Not entirely undeserved, I might add. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about Sylvanas the Elves. I'd like to take a moment and thank my collaborator patrons, the Heroes of the Lance, and invite you to consider becoming a patron or member of this channel by visiting the links in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. I am referencing the Races of Ancelon sourcebook primarily for this information. If I misspeak or leave something out, please let me know in the comments below. In the Foundation, in the Age of Dreams, the gods populated Kryn with three races. Gilean created humans, Tachesis created ogres, and Paladine created elves. It didn't take long for the races to claim territory and form tribal communities. When the ogres enslaved humans in order to build their empire, the elves watched from the safety of their forests. The elves watched as the ogre nations split from within, as their slaves revolted and the ogres degenerated into monstrous versions of what they had once been. There's something poetic about the ogres' descent that is echoed in the elves' own descent, for as the ogres' forms became twisted, the elves' home would eventually follow. In the time of light, in the Age of Dreams, Sylvanos Goldeneye believed his race was superior to ogres and humans, and as he and his people watched their civilizations fall, he convened the first High Elven Council, Synthel Elish, where they decided to scavenge the ogre ruins and build their own civilization in the forest of Sylvanesty, where they all believe life began. Sylvanos became the first Speaker of the Stars and married a woman named Quinari. Not every elf was content to serve Sylvanos, however, and a group led by Kagonos rejected Sylvanos's mandate to be a servant caste in Sylvanesty. He turned his back on Sylvanos and his new kingdom and disappeared into the forests. The elves quickly learned that the forests they claimed were already occupied by none other than the first creations themselves. Dragons! Thus began the first dragon war. Thousands of elves died in the battles, and when they were on the verge of becoming extinct, the gods of magic, lunatary, solinary, and nuitary, granted them the knowledge to create dragonstones, rune-bearing crystals that could trap a dragon's soul. The elves used the stones with relish and, ultimately, defeated the dragons, casting their trapped souls into the abyss of Nemith Otham, thus ensuring their survival. The elves then hid the stones underneath the Calchas Mountains, knowing they would be safe and forgotten. <laughs> well, there they lay, safe and forgotten, until the dwarves began excavating their new mountain kingdom of Thorin. They decided to destroy the stones and the Lords of Doom, but were ambushed by ogres on the way, and the dragon stones were lost, and the dragons released. The dragons unleashed hell on the elves. They commanded armies of Bacallian ogres in the Second Dragon War and laid siege to Sylvanesty. A trio of sorcerers called forth magic and with it demanded that Kryn itself swallow the dragons forever. The magic ran wild and destroyed thousands of lives. The three sorcerers begged the gods for help and were removed by the gods of magic to create the orders of high sorcery. The magic would take centuries to fully subside. Tensions between Sylvanesty borders and the Argothian Empire had been boiling up for centuries. When Sylvanos died in 2515 PC, his son Sithel became the new Speaker of the Stars and erected the Palace of Quinari in memory of his father. Sithel had two sons, Sithas and Kithcanon, and 300 years later, when their father, the Speaker of the Stars, is mysteriously killed in Sylvanesty's borders, they declare war on Ergoth. The Kinslayer War is known as one of the most disastrous conflicts in history, with countless dead. Elves, dwarves, and humans fought ferociously, and in the end, everyone tired of death. 
General Giarna lied dead. Kit Cannon scarred. It would take 70 years of work, but Kit Cannon would eventually negotiate a peace treaty called the Sword Sheath Scroll. The Hammer of Honor would be forged by the dwarves and shared between the three nations as a reminder of the tragedy of the war and their combined strength and unity. The speaker, Sethas, lost trust in his brother Kit Cannon after he married Suzine des Quivelin, the former consort of General Giarna from the Kinslayer Wars. Kit Cannon would leave Sylvanesty with thousands of his brothers and sister elves to found Quilinesty. When Sethas heard of the migration, he sent warriors to stop it, shedding the blood between the factions, cementing the divide between the two elven nations. For the next thousand years, Sylvanesty elves looked inward, celebrating their peace and prosperity. As Istar rose in power, the elven nation would openly defy its bigoted proclamations. The two nations would skirmish with each other's naval merchant routes, which would lead to Sylvanesty blockading Istar. Then the cataclysm hit. Sylvanesty became an isolated nation. Three hundred years later, the dragon armies would attack Sylvanesty, and the survivors would flee to southern Ergoth to their cousins. The current Speaker of the Stars would be taught to use the Dragon Orb, and with the confidence he could effectively protect his nation with it, he tried just that. Unfortunately, his mind was seized by the Dragon Orb, draping Sylvanesty in a nightmare that would affect the forest for decades. Alana Starbreeze would bring the companions to Sylvanesty to banish Kyan Bloodbane, the green dragon controlling Lorak's nightmare vision, and begin the long road to restoration. By that time, the elves had been enforcing their position on all other life on Kryn for thousands of years, living in arrogance and racism only rivaled by the king priest of Istar. Though the next generation is willing to work together in this third dragon war for peace, it is a precarious peace that will last through the end of the War of the Lance and through the Second Cataclysm. In an effort to unite the two elven nations, Alana Starbreeze would marry Portheos of Quilinesty, and after a coup, they were branded as Dark Elves. Their son, Sylvanoche, was placed on the throne. The Chaos War would see the Sylvanesty return to isolationism, retreating under a magical shield that ultimately sapped their life force, erected by their old nemesis, Kyan Bloodbane. In the Age of Mortals, Mina would arrive with her army, passing through the nation's shield and kill Kyan Bloodbane, garnering faith and trust in her, which led to barely any resistance in her claiming Sylvanesty for the One God. Sylvanoche would fall in love with Mina, following her and her army to take the city of Sanction, who in turn were followed by Alana and the unified armies of Sylvanesty and Qualinesty. Minotaurs attacked Sylvanesty in their absence, slaughtering their people and claiming the forest nation for their own. In Sanction, when Tachesis is made mortal through Paladine's sacrifice, she moves to kill Mina, and Sylvanoche steps in, killing Tachesis with a broken dragonlance. Mina in turn kills Sylvanoche out of rage, Alana is redeemed and passes the title of Speaker of the Stars to Gilthaz Solisteran, Lorana and Tannis Half-Elven's son. Gilthaz was thought to be a puppet king, but he secretly married Cariansere, the lioness, thereby uniting the three elven nations once again after nearly 3,000 years. For those elves who chose to join this new unified elven tribe, they would follow Gilthaz into Kerr in search of a new homeland. But this migration would cause a fraction within its own tribe and the native tribes of Kerr. And that is all I have to say about the Sylvanesty elves. Do you think they were given a bad rap due to the circumstances they found themselves in? Would the loss of their homeland have happened if they opened their home to other races? And finally, what's your favorite elven piece of art? Leave a comment below. I'd like to once again invite you to consider becoming a patron or a member of this channel, and you can pick up Dragonlance Gaming materials using my affiliate link, all of which are in the description below. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance Saga, and I hope you'll join me in the celebration. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, troubles borrowed will be paid back with interest compounded on sorrow.